See, they're pushing against each other below the surface. They just like to touch. And that's why he's doing that. And his fin is staying at the surface like that. A lot of people don't understand what real whales are. This is where they are doing what nature meant them to do. They live in their family groups. They forage and hunt for fish. They socialize, they breed, and they travel miles and miles a day up and down this natural coastline. This is the real sea world. There's a, a whole bunch of emotions that I have when I go out and see the whales, um, either just from the shore here or out in a whale watching boat. And it always starts with uh, just awe, right? I'm in awe of the beauty of the, the environment, of the freedom, and, and then that it fairly quickly shifts for me into um, sadness. What I thought I understood about whales as a SeaWorld trainer and what I saw from them, just the few glimpses I got in the wild was like, I know nothing about whales, you know? I, I know nothing, you know, SeaWorld didn't teach me anything about whales. I wasn't teaching anything, anything to anyone. Nothing educational really came out of my mouth at SeaWorld. I knew captivity wasn't quite so good for killer whales, but I, I really at that, hadn't known what they were missing all that time until I saw the wild animals. It blew me away. These former employees um, who have come forward have done a great service to the larger story of telling the world what really goes on behind the gates and that things are not quite as you might think they are. When I see these animals living in their families, living in their natural habitat, living natural lives on a daily basis. And then I think about Tillicum, held in a concrete tank for most of his life. I am so sad for Tillicum. When I first heard about Tillicum, I thought he was a gruesome killer. I thought he was a bloodthirsty maniac. Once I learned about the removal of him from his mother's side in Iceland, put in a tank with whales he didn't know, forced to live with these two other whales in uh, sea land of the Pacific who beat him up all the time, uh, then shipped off to Orlando, dominated by the females uh, in this artificial pod that he was inserted into, you actually really come to develop a tremendous amount of sympathy for Tilico. If he were left alone in Iceland, he wouldn't have killed not one person, not two people, and certainly not three people. Last night we stood on the cliff and actually saw them passing and it was unbelievable. The sun was setting, the moon was rising, these whales were traveling right next to shore and there was a whole group of tourists, families with kids who were watching. The children ooing and eyeing at what they were seeing it was absolutely fantastic. And I can't imagine a more educational, life-affirming, life-changing experience for those kids than that. Anyone out there, you know, anyone wants to be a trainer, I would say go somewhere where you can see wild killer whales. To see these animals doing what they do in the wild and living like actual whales live, and then decide if what you really want to do is train animals that are, for all intents and purposes, living in a tiny little bathtub, swimming circles their entire lives, and they never get to retire. Retirement for a SeaWorld whale is death.